Hello, you cool cats, and welcome back to another episode of Steins Gate. Um, I am pretty excited to see where we are going with this. The audio is all silent at the start of this. It's so weird. Anyways, the ticking of the clock is like a hammer inside my head. It's past 2 a.m. The window is closed, and the lab is silent before the humming of is silent but for the humming of the computer. We stare at the gruesome image displayed on the monitor, speechless. I was right. We're in too deep. I half expect guys in black suits and sunglasses to kick down the door and drag us off to a secret military prison. Better make sure the door's locked. What's going on here? Daru breaks the silence with a disbelieving whisper. They jellified someone? Upon hearing the familiar word jellified, I reflexively look at the bunch of bananas placed next to the computer. There's only one banana left. We didn't have a single successful experiment today, so none of them were jellified. But I don't think this is a mere coincidence. The jellified bananas produced by the phone wave named subject to change and the jellified corpses produced by CERN's experiments, they seem identical in nature. They're experimenting on people. Kurisu speaks calmly despite her grim expression. She doesn't even advert her eyes from the gruesome image. And this means they've created a time machine, doesn't it? Even if it's not perfect. Uh. Eh? I'm still in shock, so I don't quite grasp the meaning of Kurisu's words. This New York Times article is from 1921. 90 years ago. Look. Kurisu points to part of the black and white photograph, her finger shaking slightly. The jellified corpse of a man. She's pointing to his shoulder, which has writing on it. Perhaps it was printed on his clothes. It's fused onto his jellified body, but you can somehow manage to read it. Sarah. What the? Did nobody see that? So CERN used the LHC to send someone back to 1921? Looks like they failed to keep him alive, though. Is this the only report? No, there's more. Looks like 14 people in total? More jellymen? Oops. More jellymen? That means more jellified people. More victims of human experimentation. I swallow hard. I'm awfully thirsty. I take a cold Dr. P out of the fridge and wet my throat. Show me the others. Daru pulls up another report. Without being told to, Kurisu begins translating out loud. Jellyman's Report 9 Subject, Dan Strasky, age 26, Canadian She's 
she's fluent in other languages. I thought she just was good at English, but she's clearly also reading um, French. Z program four, date of experiment 2004, nine, six. Oh, actually, I just should have just said what it was, <laughs> whatever. September 6th, T, 1410. Results, error, human is dead, mismatch. Oh, I thought she was reading the, um, the report. You know, I took two years of French in school. Um, and what's sad is, like, I'm looking at this article, and I can actually see words that I know I learned in my my classes, and I have no idea what the words mean anymore. <laughs> the newspaper clipping. I think it's in French. I can't read it. You can read the date, though. January 31st, 2001. The location is Paul, France, I guess. 2001, that's fairly recent. A pretty big difference from James McCarthy, who jumped nearly 90 years back to 1921. Oh, I guess they wouldn't have realized what CERN was back 90 years ago. I'm an idiot. Let's move on. <laughs> Daru calls up the machine translation, giving us the following. January 31st, 2001. Collapsed male corpse discovered in forest outside Pau, France. Its left foot was fused to a tree trunk and the body had jellified. Daru goes to the next report. Jellyman's report, 8. Jellyman's report, 8. Linda Hill, 25 years old, born in Subject, Linda Hill, age 25, British. Why were they picking, like, all these different nationalities? Was it just, like, maybe a nationality will work? I have no idea. You know, they keep saying that the human is dead mismatch. Does that mean, like... Only certain humans can do it? Or is it like... Because mismatch make, makes me think that they, they've got an idea of like... What exactly they're trying to achieve. So maybe it has something to do with... With where a person is born. Or maybe something in the DNA. I don't know. Anyways. <clears throat> Z program four, date of experiment, 2004, February 15th, day after Valentine's Day, <laughs> T, 1345. Or maybe it's like some sort of phrase in something that I, I've never heard before, like maybe that's like a common way of, I don't know, like identifying something that I don't know. I, like, I don't know. I don't know much about science. <laughs> Anyways, results. Error. Human is dead. Mismatch. October 2nd, 1972. The jellified body of a woman was discovered on the streets of Dharmapuri in... Tamil Nadu, India. There were signs that the body had been run over by a car. Dora goes to the next page. Well, at least I should be able to read this one. Jellyman's Report 7, 
危険者ミハイル・ラング33歳出身ドイツ Subject Michael Lang age 33 German Z プログラムよ実験日2002年10月8日13時28分 C program for date of experiment 2002 October 8th T 1328実験結果エラー Human is dead mismatch I mean we already know <laughs> The article clipping is written in Japanese I also took、um, two years of Japanese but I retained this a lot better But I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to translate it faster than I was trying to translate it just now, just looking at it. Looks like a pre war newspaper. May 24th, 1936. The corpse of what is believed to be a jellified human was discovered at the base of Mount Hei in Kyoto. It was in a damaged state, possibly from having slid down the slope. It even happened in Japan. I've never heard this story before. It was pre war, though, so I guess someone born in the 90s like me would have no way of knowing about it. Next page. The picture shows a beach, beautiful, but for the jellyfish like body lying on the sand, it must have washed ashore. Jellyman's Report 6. 危険者マーク・ヒューズ30歳出身アメリカ。Subject, Subject マーク・ヒューズ、age 30, アメリカン。Z プログラムよ。実験日、2002年8月23日、12時52分。C, C プログラム4、date of experiment 2002、August 23rd, T1252。実験結果、エラー。1985年7月1日。ベロー諸島、ストレイモイ島の海岸に奇妙な物体がまばらついた。On July 1st, 1985, a strange body washed ashore on the coast of Stremoi Faroe Islands. それは成人男性のようにも見えるが、クラゲのようなブヨブヨの物体であり、生きてはいない。島の住人たちの間では、半魚人の死骸ではないかという噂も。It appeared to be the body of an adult male. Its flesh was soft like that of a jellyfish. Some of the island's inhabitants believe it was the body of a merman. Kata to Mirare Bashoniwa, Serun to you, Kokun Gatta, Serun a Kanyo, he tells me. The inscription Serun was found near, on the body's, near the body's shoulder, but Serun denies any involvement. Keep looking. I've seen enough. There are 14 of these people? The sites are spread throughout the world. What can we deduce from this? They must have sent them to those places. Really? I don't think so. Right? That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to send someone, like, somewhere, you wouldn't send them to places where people would just happen to find them. You would send them in places that you would know where to, like, cover it up. I don't think so. It's too random. There was something about care black holes and gravity, right? Isn't that the cause? It is believed that due to the infinite compression by supergravity, the subject could not endure passage through the care black hole's singularity. That's what it said. What's a care black hole? Is it different from a regular black hole? It's a theoretical black hole with a rotating singularity. Their existence hasn't been proven yet. 
Not that there's any way to prove one exists. Hair black hole. Where have I heard that term before? Wasn't it from John Titor? And the other thing? Ah, uh, I, I think so. Yeah, that's right. John Titor. Titor said that his time machine used care black holes. Titor was saying that in 2034, CERN was able to use time so, According to Titor, Saren finished their time machine in 2034, and then Titor himself came from 2036. It makes sense for Titor and Saren to be using the same time travel technology. Krisu closes her eyes in deep thought. Yeah, you really can't just refute him now with all of this can you it's really hard when you close yourself from basically listening to someone's explanation at this crazy stage you're just kind of limiting your options of getting answers Creating care black holes, that's insane. If you screw up, it could swallow the earth. And besides, care black holes are just a theoretical construct. If Titor's predictions are reality, then that means the LHC's worst case scenario video on Mewtube was right. Mewtube, a popular video sharing website. I don't know about Titor's predictions, but I've seen the problem video before. It was on the news two or three years ago. A CG mock-up of an LHC-generated mini black hole swallowing the Earth went viral when it was uploaded to MewTube. The gravitational forces inside a black hole are unbelievably powerful. It's certainly possible that passing through one could allow time displacement, but there's no way a human could do that and come out alive. That must be how these people got jellified. It wouldn't just jellify you, it would tear you apart particle from particle. That's what a black hole does. Before we discuss this, shouldn't we look through the rest of their time machine research? Daru's already started pulling up new documents. I'm suddenly afraid. Is it okay to keep hacking CERN like this? Should I stop him? I'm the one who asked him to do it, but things have gotten serious now. But at the same time, irresistible curiosity wells up inside me. Time travel is becoming a reality. I want to know that it's true. I can't stop now. What the? Here we go! There's a file in the Z program that explains time travel theory! That was pretty easy to find. CERN should have better security. Their security's fine! I'm just too good! My favorite right arm, Daru. Daru is my favorite right arm. Super hacker, okay. I thought he was your super hacker. 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 So what does it say, Christina? So what does it say, Christina? 
This is in English too, so I have no choice but to rely on my assistant. Um, can you give me some time to read it? Chrissy's eyes dart left and right across the lines. Her earlier reluctance has vanished. It looks like she's as curious as I am. No way! But this is... Is Taito really... What are you muttering about? Tell me what it says! Right. You know, this feels like one big joke. What do you mean? It's almost the same, the same as Taitar's theory. I kind of wonder, like, we've already referenced the fact that she she's online and she kind of visits the same sort of sites that um Rintaro goes to I wonder if she was like on that forum like talking smack to Titor or like maybe even like talking smack to um Rintaro on through the site anonymously under some other some other name I I'm not sure but I kind of wonder. <laughs> Basically. The LHC smashes protons together at 99.99991% the speed of light. By doing so, they compress the mass of that number into an extremely tiny space of that number. I know it's 10 to the negative 19, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to read all that. In Japanese, please. Three lines, Max. A small mass. The rest into a narrow space. With great force. The ex that explanation's too vague. <laughs> that explanation's too erotic. Huh? What part of it is erotic? Sounds like you have a pretty good imagination yourself. I'm not like you! Her blushing cheeks make her denial less than effective. Don't listen to this fool, Christina. Continue. What were we talking about? Thrusting with great force. Proton compression. Right, successful compression generates a micro singularity which. A micro singularity, not a mini black hole? Same thing, essentially. A singularity is the core of a black hole. This process generates a black hole with two micro-singularities. A black hole with two cores? Like a cowlick with two hairs? No, I don't think that's it. Explain with cute girls. I guess she's going along with it. Fine. Say there are two cute girls. Mike Chan and Crow Chan. Sisters are moi, haha. Mike Chan and Crow Chan are 
What are we going through? <laughs> By feeding Mike Chan and Crow Chan electrons, you can make them do whatever you want. Electric shock torture? Is that some sort of eroge? It's erotic game. That's what it stands for. I hate that I know that. <laughs> Short for erotic game. Games with erotic content. So you then force them to rotate at an extremely high velocity. And then, theoretically, Mech-chan and Crow-chan transform into magical girl Ring Singularity. Q stock transformation scene. Got it. This is a lot of stupid things going on here. Refers to the transformation sequences in Henshin Hero and Magical Girl anime. Since stock, stock transformation scenes are used in nearly every episode, their animation is done independently in advance. As a result, the production quality is often higher than that of the rest of the anime. Well, it looks like these two have found a common wavelength. <laughs> The resulting black hole exhibits what's called the care effect. What are care black holes anyway? You said they spin, but what does that mean? Exactly what it sounds like. But don't black holes usually spin? I mean, there's a whirlpool around the hole, right? The part that looks like it's spinning is just the surrounding matter being sucked into the black hole. The black hole is just the point where extreme mass causes gravitational collapse. Everything falls toward it. Since it's only a point, it doesn't spin. A care black hole has a ring at its center, not a point. Think of it like this. Once transformed into magical girls, Mikchan and Krochan's hearts spin like a ring inside their bodies, which is impossible for normal people. I'll pass on the Guru. Before you said that such a black hole's existence would be impossible to prove. What did you mean? Black hole has what's called an event horizon. Once you pass the event horizon, time and space switch places. Time and space switch places? Right now, we can move freely through space and into the future, but we can't even move one minute into the past. That becomes reversed. On the other side of the event horizon, moving freely through space becomes impossible while free moving freely through time becomes possible. I can't even imagine what that's like. Since unrestricted spatial movement is impossible, you can never escape a black hole. 
For example, if Okabe jumped into a black hole, time for him would stretch to infinity. Since light cannot escape, human eyes cannot see the other side of the event horizon. Observing a black hole from the outside is impossible, so nothing about the inside can be proven. There is an exception, however. This exception is vital when you use a care black hole for time travel. Get to the point. The care black holes ring singularity. Since it's spinning, it has angular momentum. Like I said in Japanese, please. Didn't I already explain how the core spins? Just think of that as having momentum. If you keep giving Mik-chan and Kro-chan electrons, they'll rotate faster and faster. And when their angular momentum exceeds a certain threshold, the event horizon will disappear, and the singularity will become a naked singularity. Alright, let's read all these tips. Event horizon, also known as the Schwarzschild surface. In a black hole, there exists a point beyond which even light can no longer escape. The black hole's immense gravity. This boundary is called the event horizon because light and other electromagnetic waves are responsible for conveying information. Nothing that occurs within the event horizon can be observed from the outside. The center of a black hole is black because no light can escape from it. Naked singularity. A singularity is usually concealed by its event horizon, which renders observation impossible. A naked singularity is a singularity whose event horizon has been removed. It can therefore be observed and even traveled through. The existence of naked singularities is purely theoretical. Naked! You mean the magical girl costumes expose a lot of skin, right? When does the anime adaptation air? Karisu and I ignore Dara's nonsense. Naked, you mean it becomes observable. When the event horizon disappears, there's no more reason for time and space to change places, meaning that you can enter a naked singularity without being trapped. And then the existence of the naked singularity allows the principle of causality to be violated and the general theory of relativity to fail. The laws of physics are broken. Can, can such a thing exist? The negation of a theory of relativity and the principle of causality means serious paradoxes can occur. Didn't Karisu say that earlier? Nothing in principle stops care black holes from existing. It seems inconsistent, but the math never lies. Since the principle of causality fails, it would be possible to travel to the past by entering a naked singularity. John Titor said the same thing. So Titer's time machine is using Saren's technology. But Titer's time travel was compact, small enough to fit into a car. The LHC is 27 kilometers long, but they managed to get it down to travel size in just 24 years. One thing I don't understand is how they inject electrons into the singularity. Look, 
This is a picture of the LHC, where there's strange equipment installed at the proton collision site. It looks like they call it a lifter, but just what is it? Daru, have you heard of it? Lifter, lifter, I think I saw that in the Z program files. Want to Google it? Daru opens up a browser window and enters lifter into the search engine. We've got hits! About 422,000 results. That many? I guess it's not a secret. Could this be it? Eoncraft. Ions are charged particles. The meaning matches. We click on a link that says Ionocraft Lifter. It takes us to a video. Looks like some dim garage. But it doesn't seem like anything secretive. Just a garage like you'd see at any average American home. At the center of the screen is a triangular shape made of some kind of metal. It looks about 10 centimeters high and about 30 centimeters wide. It's connected to some sort of generator by a thin wire. Looks like some really cheap equipment. That's all there is. Nothing else. After explaining something in some language I don't understand, Russian maybe? The person filming the video slowly turns the power on, and then it's floating. The silvery triangle floats soundlessly into the air, and then it remains stationary. That's an anti-gravity device. Don't be ridiculous. That'd be the breakthrough of the century. It's called an ionocraft, so it probably has something to do with electrodes and charged air. Kirsty doesn't sound as confident as she usually does. We look up information on the ionocraft lifter. Lots of sites have detailed instructions on how to make lifters. But I don't know how they work since the sites all give conflicting theories. Saren is using this lifter technology. It's a vital component of their time machine. If they can manipulate a micro-singularity's mass and gravitational field, then these things really are anti-gravity devices. Well, under those exact conditions, I guess you might not be entirely wrong. Incredible! My curiosity's growing more by the second. But it looks like Saren's having trouble adjusting their lifter. They don't have full control over the micro-singularity's gravity, so they can't make a true naked singularity. That must be why the subjects turned into jellymen. Kurisu nods. Since the singularity is still closed, the subject is crushed by its tremendous gravity. As a result, substances become fractalized. Let's go with the, that hypothesis. Of course, there's no way to be sure that it's right. It might take months to prove. Kurisu shrugs her shoulders in resignation. Lifter. 
So CERN's lifter is still incomplete. If Taito is telling the truth, then CERN won't complete their time machine for another 24 years. If we can complete the phone wave name subject to change first, then we'll have outwitted CERN. We don't have half the equipment or funding Saren does. What makes you think you can solve a problem that they can't? This isn't that simple. Saren still hasn't figured out how to set the subject's destination in time or space. That should be evident by how scattered the Jellyman discoveries were. We don't even know if this is all of them. There could be Jellymen buried underground or floating in space. Actually, I'm almost certain there are. There's no point traveling through time if you end up in tens of thousands of kilometers away from the Earth. It's not practical at all. Taitor said that he had a variable gravity lock system. He can use that to lock onto the Earth's gravity and ensure he arrives somewhere on the planet's surface. Taitor's explanation on that point was vague. He mentioned having such a device, but he didn't explain how it worked. But if you're only moving through time, wouldn't you just arrive in the same location? Of course not. Oh no. Okay, I'm just gonna skip past all of this and catch back up to where I was. Why not? There it is! Because the Earth is always moving. Oh, it's from Ferris. Have you bought Phantom's debut single yet? It's the theme song from Reinit Kakaru, so it's really popular. Ferris bought five copies now. It's my duty as a Reinetter. Anyway, there's an important secret hidden in Phantom songs. The key to unlocking it is... Oops. The bell's ringing, yeah? Looks like someone is here. Better see who it is. I was gonna pick this one. I'm aware. They said to contain... They are said to contain directions to the sanctuary as well as prophecies regarding the end of the world. Isn't that right? <laughs> I'm just going to play along. Right. Rotation and revolution. The Earth's rotational velocity is about 1,650 kilometers per hour. Its orbital velocity around the sun is about 114,000 kilometers per hour. Meaning one hour ago, we were that far away from where we are now. Whoa, when you think about it like that, we're earth-shatteringly fast. And that's not all. The solar system is part of the Milky Way, and the Milky Way spins like a giant whirlpool. 
There are various theories, but basically the Earth moves about 50 million kilometers a day. How can she roll all those numbers so smoothly off her tongue? I get that she's a genius, but it's hardly common knowledge. Has she been doing research on the topic? We've kind of gotten to a ludicrous scale. Well, she said her father was, like, into this sort of research, so maybe she just knows it really well because of him. By the way, the Milky Way is part of a large cluster of galaxies, which is itself part of an even larger sub-supercluster. And these clusters and superclusters might be moving too. If that's the case, we're moving even more than 50 million kilometers a day. The point is that setting the destination would require insane calculations, even if you only want to travel one second into the past. Doing it by hand is impossible, and it might take years for a supercomputer to come up with a solution just to get you to the same location. <laughs> then we have no choice. We need to find Titer and borrow his variable gravity system. Great idea. Go for it. I wonder how Saren is dealing with this problem. <laughs> After blowing me off, Kursu goes back to reading Saren's documents. Dara and I aren't good with English, so there's nothing we can do but let her work. Oh my gosh. This seems like a good place to stop. Um, so that was a wild episode of basically finding out that, you know, Titer's legit, which, you know, for this game, I kind of saw coming. Um, if you guys are fans of my podcast that I'm on, um, Picking Up the Pixels with Boston and Musim, I kind of brought up a little bit of my feelings on, on some of the characters, and... In case you don't check that out and, and want a quick rundown, I am really feeling a bit stomach-turningly not good about Moika. I I don't feel good. And then the more that I, I let it rest, I really wish we hadn't have messaged her because it just, it feels, it feels like she's crazy or she might like break in here and steal it. Like, we gave her our address, and she seems nuts. I am not happy that we let her have that information. So, I don't know if anything's going to come about that. I imagine there is. I've been told that there's multiple endings to this. So, I don't know what ending I'm, I'm traveling down towards. Hopefully, an okay one. I think the biggest problem is, is based on what, I, what we talked about on the podcast, is that I've been answering everyone's phone calls I am definitely going to ignore Moika like the plague on my next playthrough because I want nothing to do with her but anyways thank you guys so much for watching this episode I'm going to be recording another one really soon so I hope you guys look forward to seeing more Steins Gate and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye